Now with our great, great American panel. Uh, well, there's an article that I read today that Carter was the president when Iran fell, and Barack Obama is going to be the president when Egypt falls. Now, you were with Carter in those years uh, with the Shah and the transition, and, and you were actually in, a, in Iran at a very, very precarious moment. Yeah, well, when, when the Shah had left and Bakhtiar was the interim president, I mean, there will be an interim president of Egypt until the military decides who it's going to be. Probably the but, vice president? But I would not, maybe, the, they, we had, you know, Mubarak did not name a vice president for years because right. he was waiting for his son to take over. But uh, this is not unusual for republics in the, in, in the Arab world as opposed to monarchies like in Saudi Arabia. But uh, the difference between Carter and Obama in this thing is apples and oranges. I mean, you had a waiting power of the Ayatollah Khomeini sitting in Paris ready to come back and take over. In Egypt, you don't have that. Uh, now, you could argue that's more dangerous. I don't think so, because I think the military is in charge. But you could say Obama did. Obama lose it under his watch and that sort of thing. I mean, I think that's... And nobody can predict when the Arab world is going to disintegrate or whether it's going to change. The problem with the administration, uh, this administration, is there's no coherent policy. You have Joe Biden a couple of weeks ago, the vice president, saying that uh, Mubarak is not a dictator. This sounds like Gerald Ford saying that, you know, there's no Soviet influence in Poland. Yeah, but Cal, you've got to remember that Israel gets 35 percent of her natural gas from Egypt. And under the treaties, the, the United States made a decision to get into a treaty with a dictator. We've done that in a lot of places. Of course. Democrats and Republicans. The devil you know is better than the one you don't That's know. That's right. And so, but when, what Joe Biden was trying to do was figure out what was going on. The same thing the military was trying to do in Egypt. They didn't know. They made their decision a few days ago. But who, who knew whether Mubarak was going to last or not? You couldn't call him a dictator and walk away from him when Israel would have suffered a lot. What do you think, Marsha? Uh, again, I think that what we're going to do is hope that we're going to see them move towards some kind of uh, secular democracy. I, I think that we would want that. The Egyptian people have been a good ally for the U.S. We have to want that. I think that we have to think of another thing, talking about the policy with the natural gas that is there in Egypt, the Suez Canal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's important in this entire discussion, and we need to keep an eye there. It's going to be very interesting. I think the role that the Egyptian people, the younger Egyptian people, are going to play in this transition is going to be significant well, and probably the, the, something the, the we've not seen in this region. You know, I, and this is not gratuitous shots at the administration, but they did sell a very different foreign policy where Joe Biden had all this experience and Barack Obama's outreach to the Muslim world right. and, 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 you He's know... He's going to take the 3 a.m. phone call and... Yeah, the 3 a.m. I yeah, mean, but, you know, one, one thing that has not been brought up is, is this another intelligence failure? I, Lee, I, how did we not know? Why did this take everybody by surprise? Let's, let's remember, it, did, it didn't take everybody by surprise. It started in Tunisia, where, where maybe the intelligence wasn't as good as it was, but it's not, the stakes are not as high. It, it, but it seemingly but can took I, everybody can I talk by surprise. About this? I think the Suez Canal is an important point. Yeah. Let's remember that Nasser fought and became a hero, a champion in the Arab world by taking the Suez Canal back. The last thing that the Arab world wants is to have the Suez Canal closed, because that means you have only have one place to get your oil out. That's for the Strait of Hormuz, Hormuz which right. puts Iran in charge. You imagine what the Saudis are thinking tonight? And, by the way, it was interesting to see in Syria that uh, uh, the son of, of uh, the former dictator there is now making amends to a lot of his people. It, 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 the Suez Canal is vital, absolutely vital. And I think right. it's Egypt's interest to keep it open. If, if we have I another agree. radical regime, though, in the Middle East, the, and especially if you look at the border with Jordan and, uh, and uh, Lebanon and Egypt and Syria... What does this little country of Israel do? And Gaza, yeah. And Gaza. I think you have to look, uh, Marsha talks about the young people in Egypt, but let's look at the polls. The Pew Research poll, all polling for the past several years, shows that the next generation are as radical as their, uh, as their forebears. They are for stoning adulterers, and by the way, if that's the only way we can get term limits in Congress, I'm for it. Uh, therefore, <laughs> women subservient and all the rest. Nothing will change. <laughs> Uh, it's going to change, you know, because what Mark said, the social networking is going to change this generation of Arabs. I believe that. I strongly do. All right. This is a great discussion tonight. And uh, good to see you, Congresswoman. Good Thank to you. see you. Cal, we always John. love having you back. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Beckel, you actually made a lot of sense tonight. <laughs> uh, that's all the time we have left. Greta's next, and we will see you back here tomorrow night. Thanks for being with us.